So, it looks like you want an overview on how to read your analytics? Okay, you got it. Analytics can be a powerful tool to help you grow as a creator. It can give you the best insights into who your audience is, what they like, and even the best time to post. Luckily for us streamers, Twitch gives us all the info we need to get our answers. That is, if you know what you're looking at. Don't worry though, I've got you covered. This is going to be a long one, so buckle in as we do a deep dive on how to read Twitch analytics. For starters, go to the creator dashboard. This will take us behind the scenes and off of the viewer focused portion of the site. First up is the homepage, a relatively new layout and design of the back end. From first glance, you'll be met with important announcements and stats from your most recent stream. This here is reminding me that mobile subscription prices are increasing, which is good to know as it may have an impact on my mobile subscribers. Just below that are features for you, which is suggestions on next steps. Now, these are not mandatory by any means, but it could help with the overall completed look of your channel. For example, it's reminding me that I can set up a schedule or post a trailer for a bit extra to my page. Still haven't done that yet though. Below that, we have insights for you, a place to see if your viewers are also streamers and who else they might watch. This is beneficial if you want to start reaching out to people, maybe for collabs or just better insight on what your viewers like. Lastly, on the homepage, we have the analytics highlights. This shows a simplified bar chart of revenue, subs, follows, and unique chatters. This week compared to last. More detailed analytics is our next step. Go to the side navigation and click the analytics dropdown. We'll first start at the overview. Here you can track your overall performance at a glance for the last 30 days or set a custom date range to compare progress over time. Each section, when you click the arrows, can be changed to a different metric to easily toggle through your most used stats. Personally, I like to have average viewers, follows, revenue, time streamed, and max viewers. You can change the date range at the top of the banner to go between periods with the arrows. At the bottom, you can also export all this data outside of the platform. You'll be able to get a Google spreadsheet or Excel and export everything within that time period. If you need more definitions though to figure out what you're looking at, click this tooltip that explains the different metrics. I like to use this overview to keep an eye on overall metrics. I'm not necessarily watching it like a hawk, but it gives me an idea of how my streams are doing metric wise. I recently switched to streaming Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, so I'll be checking this overview to see trends and averages based on this new schedule. Below that, we have category suggestions. These are suggestions from Twitch for higher average viewer per channel categories. This is good if you're trying to grow your audience and not sure what to stream next, although just a suggestion. I know it's Halloween, but I will not be streaming any of those scary games. Lastly, you'll have an overview of your streams, top clips of the period, and in progress milestones. These we can dive into in their specific sections. On to research. This is an expanded section on the previous category suggestions. At the top, you can either quick click on the recently streamed or search a category to look at. After the explanation, you have a graph. This graph shows average viewer per channel based on the day and time of week. On a selected day when the number is higher, there are more viewers per channel than usual. The blue average line averages the info. So if we look at TCG Card Shop Simulator on Mondays, we can see that there is an average of 14.2 viewer to channel ratio. You also have the date range option at the top and excluding popular channels. A popular channel is a channel trending at that hour at the top 2% of the category's concurrent viewership and that minimum averages 100 or more viewers. This helps show you data without the inflated averages from those popular streamers. I used this a lot when I got started. I had no idea when I should stream, so lining up my schedule with an uptick in the viewer to channel ratio really helped me get some initial views. Now, not all upticks in the chart worked with when I could actually stream, but with my availability after 5 p.m., I knew it was good to start around seven or eight-ish. Got all that? <laughs> it's okay if you don't remember. Just click on the guidebook to see the explanations again. Lastly, here we have the edit stream schedule button. Using this info, as I mentioned, to better align your schedule, you can quickly set it up in the Twitch schedule. I 
don't actually use my schedule a whole lot through Twitch, I prefer to make my graphics and post them on my Twitter or YouTube channels. But maybe something I should consider setting up one day. The next section is achievements. Basically, straightforward where it tracks your Twitch achievements. Special things to note on this page are your path to affiliate or partner and building a community. The path objectives will be where you can apply to be Twitch affiliate or partners once the criteria has been met. The community achievement keeps track of how many VIP badges that you currently have unlocked. As for how to utilize it, it's good to just keep track of your progress in a fun, gotta catch em all sort of way. But not many additional insights here. Stream summary is up next. It has analytics from your most recent stream by default. Below that is your VOD with a graph showing which moments chat were the most active. You may want to use this to see what it is that is keeping your chat engaged or possibly an indicator for good clipping opportunities. You can also change this to other analytics such as average viewers, clips created, or new followers. This can be especially helpful if you get follow botted or hate rates to provide Twitch with proof should you need to take action. Twitch also gives you the option to export your data, create a highlight video, or go directly to the VOD. Ultimately, the analytic export I haven't really needed, there's not that much data to look at, so the other two options are just quick shortcuts. Here you have clips created and which emotes were used and how many. This is fun to see what emote might have been trending per stream, especially helpful if there was a uh, bit that involved chat's reaction. Lastly, at the bottom, you have viewer discovery for this stream. However, in our next tab, we'll go more into details on viewer analytics. Before we continue, if you watch this far, thank you! Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more creator deep dives and VTuber shenanigans. Anyways, back to the video! This is the discovery page under viewers. The page talks about how your viewers got to you. Again, you are first met with, surprise surprise, another overview graph. This time showing the different methods viewers came to your stream. Those methods being other channels, followers, browse page, and other recommendations. If you get big raids, you'll see spikes in the other channel line. After the graph, you have two sub pages, live viewership and clips viewership. It will default to live viewership, views from Twitch, which you can see on the right. By checking different boxes, you can see the different metrics displayed in the graph. The left panel shows you views from outside of Twitch. For example, my YouTube page posts my stream schedule. That gets traffic and people will click the link if they want to check me out, bringing them over to my stream. Hello if you're from YouTube, or well, I guess we're on YouTube, but make sure you say hi in stream. If I wanted to see how this looks in a graph, I click view in chart, which then allows me to toggle the displayed avenues as well. After those two main selections, you have more specific sections such as tags, viewers from channels, and go live notifications. Starting with tags. As I've mentioned in a previous video, tags can be instrumental in being discovered by new viewers. So here's how it works. When you start streaming with a tag, it will show here. Then it will have two numbers, views and impressions. The important definitions here are that an impression is the number of people that were shown your stream in browse or search when they filtered by the tag. A view, however, is the number of people who actually clicked to watch your stream after seeing it in the browse or search tab. So looking at my stats, we can see VTuber got the most impressions, which makes sense seeing how general it is. In comparison, ASMR being more specific got more views. Now a reason for this difference can be because, like this example, VTuber is going to get more eyes on you, but isn't so specific. Versus ASMR, a specific tag that correlates to specific content. This could be one reason, but maybe not for sure. However, biggest takeaways from this section are to use different tags to increase discovery. You may want to have some tags always set, like VTuber if you're a VTuber, or a tag for the content you are most well known for. Typically, testing a tag change after two weeks of using it is suggested as to get more stable metrics. Tags are also not case sensitive. And secondly, a widely used tag does not mean the impression will turn onto a view depending on how specific it is. After tags are views from channels, and these are no surprise to me. Often, I see this panel filled with channels that recently gave me large raids or people that I'm friends with and we raid each other often, connecting our communities. Then we have the go live notification. 
Now, I probably don't change this as much as maybe I should. In fact, I don't think I've changed this since I've started. But to explain what this means, engagements are the number of followers that tapped or clicked a notification when you went live, and follower reach is the percentage of your followers that have notifications turned on. It will have one for the three recent streams, but clicking view all will lead to the entire list. You may want to test a few different versions to see what makes viewers click. After streaming for a few times, take a look back here and see what worked. To wrap up this section, we have views by location. Pretty straightforward. Views by platform and engaged viewers. You can choose to display this on the overview chart as well by clicking viewing chart, which displays back at the top. This can also be helpful for sponsorship insight. If some of your viewers are more mobile than web-based viewers, maybe a mobile game might be better than PC games. But that's not it for this page as we also have Clips Viewership tab. This tab has similar metrics but instead applied to clips. The main difference here is the overview on the 25 most viewed clips on the selected date range. Second spot in the viewer section is engagement. Clicking on this will show you something familiar. Yep, just like the main overview, it's the, pretty much the same graph. You can change the metrics, yada yada, the same as previously mentioned at the start. What's different are the emote performance, channels you share viewers with, and categories your viewer watch sections. Emote's performance can show which emote is popular within or outside the channel. The total usage is the amount of times it was selected, but the unique users are the people who used it. An example is, within the channel, my most used emotes are my follower standard heart emote used by 75 individuals, but it was used a total amount of 437 times. Info like this can be helpful if you want to get new emotes and run out of slots. Less used emotes can be swapped out for something more popular or trending. The channels you share viewers with shows channels your viewers also watch, and below that are the categories they watch. Again, knowing who your viewers also watch is not only good for networking, but also to see what interests them. Most of my audience is ASMR, which makes sense, but I also found that just chatting streams are another fun thing to do to connect with my viewers. Plus, I'll take any excuse to yap. The other category my viewers watch here is... Oh, uh, remember, these are just collections of data, and although suggestions doesn't mean you have to stream them to connect with your community. Ultimately, they're there for you. Lastly, we have revenue. This overview chart is specific to income and will show you the impact on different revenue streams into the total amount, whereas subscriptions show only split by type, paid, gifted, prime, or multi-month. Some extras you may not know about here would be things like experiments. Currently, this means the Gigantify emotes, message effects, or on-screen celebrations. These are new and a test for new interactions from Twitch. Extensions could be things like Tangia or sound alerts that you connect to your stream externally and use for bit interactions. Seeing this data can also help you determine what extensions are better performing or determine if or how many ads to run. An additional note, if you get refunded subs or if there is a glitch with the user's checkout, it can subtract from your totals, so yes, this can be negative depending on the size of the refund. After the chart, you see a written breakdown of your total estimated revenue not in chart form, and next to that, an explanation of how many tier 1, 2, or 3 subs you currently have. Clicking more details will show you the sub page. This will show you the location of subscribers, listed cancelled reasons, and info on your Founders Badge holders. Founder Badges are the first people who subscribe to your stream. For Affiliates, that's the first 10, and for Partners, the first 25. I know that outside the US, I have a fair amount of UK subscribers. Knowing this, I can plan subscriber content that I share in my Discord to be posted at a time I know that isn't too late for those in the UK. Wrapping it up, the Plus program. This used to be exclusive to Partners, but is now open to any streamer that can hit the goals. Hitting these goals can give you a better cut of Twitch revenue. Clicking view details will give you explanation of the program and will show your progress towards the goal. Not much else to say about it, but worth a read if you're interested. And the very last section in this video, we have payout. This is where you can monitor your progress towards the $50 payment threshold, status, and keep tags on taxes or fees being deducted from your gross earnings. No, gross doesn't mean icky. Here, gross earnings means the total amount before taxes, fees, or any deductions. If you want to view the documents for your historical payouts, you need to log in and verify. Down at the bottom, they specifically show how much Prime Sub revenue you've earned, followed by your broadcast statistics for times watched per month, 
and total ad minutes ran during that time. I honestly don't think I've ever used this table. Well, that's it, you made it. Hopefully by now you know the ins and outs of Twitch analytics, how to read them, and how to use them to better support your streams. Now, I will say this. Analytics can mean absolutely nothing if you aren't ultimately enjoying yourself. Recommended categories are good for ideas or finding new things to stream. Peaks and people watching are good times to play, but if you aren't enjoying what you do, this isn't gonna be worthwhile. People watch streamers because they're entertaining, and speaking for myself, I stream because I enjoy interacting and sharing content that interests me with others. This deep dive into Twitch data and analytics is just something extra to give you a strategic bump along the way. Before I wrap this video up, I wanna point out that the Twitch help page is another great resource if you want to do some after video reading on the topic. But that's all I have for now. As always, if you have a question, comment down below and I might just make that the next topic of my video. Bye for now. Mwah.